Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports News. I'm Joe Burke, and this is going to be the latest edition of the Ghostly Take. As later today, I'll be joined by the great fans reporter for Flyers Nitty Gritty, Samantha Wismer, as we'll break down the entire season, the ups, downs, good, the bad, the ugly of the season. But for right now, the Phantoms did, unlike the Flyers, as the video will be linked to the end of this, the short video I did on that leading into the larger video I'm doing with Sam, they didn't go out with a bang, but the Flyers had some promise heading into the uh, off season where the Phantoms did go out with a bang and their guys do show promise heading into the off season youngsters because Adam Karinchik who had to play uh, forward who's actually a defenseman uh, yesterday uh, he stepped up and played forward for the Phantoms so that's good to see I thought Brendan Minnell came in and minus his ridiculous penalty minutes in game one had a very good uh, season for the Phantoms after coming over here from the Marlies where he was kind of an odd man out after having a great career with the Iowa Wild. So we'll see what he can develop into. I thought when in, this guy's never going to do much for you on the score sheet. But say, maybe he because of how smart and intuitive of a player he seems on the ice, he can get more in the future. But Lappin looked good defensively and you always have to have one of those just good defensive forwards. Very good defensive forwards, and the and not the Flyers. The Phantoms have a couple of them with Maxime Shusko and Nick Lappins, the veteran Shusko, the youngster. But Shusko obviously has a little bit more, in my opinion, of offensive snag as well than uh, when it comes to Nick Lappin. Linus Hergberg found that newfound confidence. That pass for the third goal in the final game was brilliant by Linus Hergberg. That's not an easy pass. He's one of those guys that he's never going to over-impress you. Like he only had eight assists in the minors this year, but he just keeps the game simple, kind of has one of those time clock that allows him to just steady steady the play, wait, 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 and then see it and go. And even in the NHL, even in that ugly game against Winnipeg, the Flyers didn't look great compared to Chicago and Ottawa where the goalies kind of just stopped them from a comeback. I thought Hoberg was kind of a calming factor on the ice as well as fellow youngster um, Igor Zamula for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms and Philadelphia Flyers who both looked good in their final games of the season with the Phantoms as well. So it was nice to see both of them get time in the NHL, look fantastic, and then look fantastic in the final game of the Phantoms. I also thought Zach was really up on the play in his final games of this season. Uh, he's still obviously new uh, to the one, the Phantoms, but also just a young player in the league in general that they were able to grab him from the P Bruins. Uh, and he, this is only his really... Because if we count 20, 20, 21, he played 21 games. Second full season, because he played 45 games in 19, 20, and then 53 this year. 21 games is not a full season, and 12 and 18, 19 is obviously not a full season. So, I mean, he's still really young in the league, only at 131 career games. So he still has a lot of room to grow. But I do like what I saw from the pickup of him as a young defenseman from another organization to bring in. And I think they also did a good job of picking up another young defenseman from another organization to bring in in Brennan Manel. So the Phantoms did pick up two guys that I think could be part of the future team, at least one of them at least, between Cooper Zek and Brennan Manel, who showed signs this year. And it's about yet um, having those guys that you can continue to develop that are not the big, always talked about guys, but the guys that eventually... When it comes to, guy, to fans that don't necessarily follow the fans, they're like, oh, who is this guy? And then they start really liking him because he's one of those high-motor, uh, just high-effort guys that obviously everybody plays with high-effort, but one of those guys that just never quits on the ice because he knows he's not one of the most freakishly talented out there. He just has to keep motoring, basically, like the Tyler Pitlicks of the world, like even the uh, Linus Sandines of the world, like the Shuskos. That's how Shusko plays, running through uh, anything for his team. So... Um, you have guys like that. And then fellow mentioned Maxime Shusko, I think still is a guy that, especially because I think he's a guy, minus five doesn't rank his defense. He's actually very good in the defensive end, in my opinion, and is getting better. It's just with when you're with the Phantoms that have lackadaisical at times this year. Not Well, I would say it's more not lackadaisical, miscommunication net front defense. That's going to hurt overall forwards plus minus. And uh, it did the same thing with Shushko as it did to others. Logan Day is also a good guy to build around. So I think the Phantoms have signs moving forward. They went out with a bang, having a great goal by Cal O'Reilly that he was able to um, snipe in. Linus Sandine, who played fantastic to round out this season. It was nice to see him be able to get the goal there. And then Isaac Ratcliffe, Ratty, who played fantastic to round out the season as well, looked fantastic 
as well in this game. And then Hogberg, of course, aforementioned, getting that fa newfound confidence from the NHL, made that beautiful outlet pass to Ratcliffe so he could score on the breakaway past the Oreo. Everybody have a great and pleasant day. Join me later as well when I upload the video with Samantha Wisdom as we're going to go deeper into breaking down the Phantom season. This was just a quick overview. I'm going to link the Flyers quick overview video as well. And then I'll post the video with Sam later as well for that one. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. This has been the latest edition of the Ghostly Take. Enjoy the offseason. And also, the Reading Royals are in the postseason up 3-2. to two, So if you have interest there, definitely come out to Reading on Monday night where there's a potential series clincher. Peace out, everybody.